Yeah, well, uh, thank you, Ricardo, for this uh, nice introduction. Yeah, I will, uh, I will talk about uh, actually uh, on-site measurements we have been uh, performing on one building in uh, Lyon. Um, I think it's quite important to say that the, we have been talking about the WUPA study case, but it actually has been designed by Thomas Rohr Architects. So I like to talk about the architects when we talk about a project. So um, to make it, uh, this is a presentation um, that I made one year ago, so I've been a bit lazy. This is actually a publication I made for Internoise, uh, which is the equivalent of uh, the soccer cup in the, in the acoustic field. How to say, we try to present papers and research. Um, yeah, this is uh, important also to, um, to say that the, all the measurements have been performed by an independent uh, body, which was PUTS. Uh, PUTS uh, in France do acoustic measurements, but in Netherlands they also do thermal measurements. So for us it's important when we do some research to also involve um, a third body, how to say. So um, I'm going to talk about the, the problematic. I think I will be a bit short about that because we, if we are here today, it's because we <laughs> already at some point faced the problem <laughs> and we are a bit aware of it. Uh, I'm going to talk quickly, shortly about the previous study and show the on-site measurements we have been for performing acoustically and thermally. But also I will uh, show the results and uh, some interpretation and conclusion and perspective, but perspective uh, that were perspective in 2013 that now have been actually quite accomplished. I will also go quickly into, uh, <coughs> into that. So we all agree that there is um, a market trend, how to say, in the way we built uh, building. So air tightness, sun protection, uh, night cooling, try to use the inertia uh, available in the building, which leads to uh, external insulation, trying to control the lighting, and uh, as um, Natalie said this morning, trying to also produce energy on site using solar panel. So within this uh, global uh, trends, we face uh, the problematic that if we want to control the temperature by uh, dealing convection and radiation using uh, concrete core activation or the use of inertia available in the concrete, we cannot actually use a ceiling. So we cannot use a ceiling because um, in order to do absorption, we need to be able to have materials that are porous materials that have that, so they have air into it. Because if a material has air into it to do absorption, you actually have a low conductivity. So by this, this properties, it can, this combination is not, is not possible. So we need to find out how we can compromise that. So the, I will go very quickly into that because actually there is in this room people that can actually speak better about this, uh, this system. But because it was an acoustic conference, I wanted to explain acoustic and how this system works. <coughs> to understand why we did this uh, on-site measurements, um, as um, Pierre Lombard uh, talked uh, yesterday, we, we had many uh, studies that were done uh, in laboratory, but there it had not at that time uh, on-site measurements. So we were a bit uh, looking, looking for a building where we could test uh, and see if the results we had in the laboratory were actually equivalent to what we could have found uh, <coughs> in real condition. So um, why, we, why did we do that? It's, uh, when, when we were testing into the laboratory, we had the specific condition. But the use and the interest of inertia, it's over a long period of time. That's, the, that's why we use inertia, for the stable condition, but over a long period of time. So we needed to assess what was the effect of our solution over a long period of time. So to perform dynamic measurements. That was what we were uh, looking for. As I said, that was what we were looking for. Because when you are looking for a building to do measurements, uh, it's not that easy. So this is where I met uh, actually Georges Mondica from uh, Quadriplus uh, Group and uh, from Cogesi that I'm really thankful of. Uh, it's actually a nice meeting. He had this building that uh, actually we have Katen here today for the, that made the thermal design of this building. And uh, he had acoustic problem in his office and he asked me like, oh, I solved this. Uh, I saw that you have some knowledge about that. You made laboratory measurements. And um, so uh, I met him and I, I, I helped him to solve because we had laboratory. So I, I told him that if you have uh, this amount of uh, coverage, you will have this effect. So is it acceptable and so on. 
And then I asked him, uh, by the way, I'm actually looking for a building where I could do measurements. And he looked at me and said, yes, I actually have 150 square meters you can use all summer. So I, I was, OK, I'm going to call my boss. It's quite good. It, uh, we found the building. It's uh, finally so very thankful for this uh, human experience, actually. So actually, this is the building designed by Thomas Roy. I repeat it. So this is the, 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 the situation. The, for the thermal part, we needed to find, uh, how to say, similar condition, two rooms of the same size, uh, with the same solar exposition, the same ventilation, the same, uh, how to say, the same um, uh, tubes, the same cooling. Um, so that was the difficulty. But we did not actually have this office. We had to build it. So we had at the beginning one big open space, one, one space like this, and this cellular office. So we actually built a partition wall here in order to recreate the same uh, condition. And this will help you to understand the, uh, the measurements we have been uh, performing. Here you have, a, you have actually a view of the global open space with the ceiling installed, uh, without the ceilings. <coughs> and this is the partition wall we have been uh, building to create the, the room. And here it's uh, the test room where we have been adding the solution, where we were measuring uh, the temperature. So the, the assumption when you are at the laboratory, the laboratory that we have been performing, it's you have an out, uh, outside room, an inside uh, chamber. You control the temperature of the inside chamber using the outside chamber. And then you have water going through a ceilings, and you can measure the uh, inside temperature and, uh, and the outside temperature of the water. And with the flow, the water flow, you can measure the cooling capacity of the ceiling. And with your solution, you can measure how this will affect. Within the dynamic uh, measurements we have been performing, it's, it's more or less what is the temperature increase. We're going to put our solution. We're going to measure the temperature. And if the temperature increase, it means that we are affecting the cooling capacity. That was the, the departure uh, assumption of this uh, study. We also perform, um, uh, Andrew was talking about this standard uh, yesterday, some propagation. So we also measure according to ISO standard uh, the, the sound propagation into the office. It was um, actually very challenging at that time because we had some idea with Ricardo about the whole a full coverage ceiling is affecting the sound propagation. What is the special decay with the full coverage ceiling? But we actually did not know when we are using free hanging units and how free hanging units will help us to uh, improve the special decay. <coughs> so this is basically the, the investigation we have been uh, performing on the acoustic side. Uh, as a subjective criteria, we use the distance of comfort. We actually created a specific definition for uh, this case. We were measuring the distance, as uh, Reiner mentioned yesterday, we use at the, the, at the one meter from the sound source a level of 57.4 decibel. And then we are measuring the distance it takes to reduce from 10 decibel. So what is the distance? I need to lose 10 decibel, which, which is subjectively uh, hearing something uh, 12 as loud as it was before, which is subjectively interesting. So here are the acoustic measurements that uh, PUTS performed for us. Uh, let's say in the propagation, we had this direction and that direction. We also make some tests with some uh, wall absorption. Um, and here is uh, yeah, the black globe uh, for the operative temperature and uh, the reference room and the test room that you can see here. The first part of the methodology is uh, to make sure that the two rooms are behaving uh, in a similar way. Of course, we're on site, so we cannot, uh, this cannot be 100% uh, exact. But we need to make sure that they are behaving in a similar way, that the solar load, the, that the temperature are quite close, and we will see the graph. <coughs> For here, it's an example of a different ceiling coverage we have been testing while we were measuring the temperature. No, time for, it's time for the results. So we have a few results here. You can see the special decay from when you go from zero, uh, zero coverage percentage up to 56. 
you double the special decay. So that's why I, I don't agree with your result yesterday when you show that from a class D ceiling to a class A ceiling, you have the same special decay. So we can see that there is a clear influence on the performance of the, the amount of absorption. Despite the fact this is not a wall-to-wall -wall ceiling, we actually affect the special decay. <coughs> and you can see that the distance of comfort is also divided by two. So if you remember, the, the, the distance of comfort is 10 decibel. So which means, with, it's quite, it was actually easy, we were looking at the result and we said like, so if I put half the ceiling, the half coverage, I reduce by half the distance it takes to hear something uh, two times less loud, half as loud. So that was a, it's a bit geeky, but it was funny. <laughs> so here is a, <laughs> yeah. Here is uh, some result about the open space um, uh, reverberation time, because in France we had, had the, the French standard is actually specifying uh, reverberation for 5, 1,000 and 2,000 uh, hertz. So you can see that when you add absorption, you reduce reverberation. There is nothing really impressive about that. We all know that. From the Sabine formula that has been presented yesterday, so it was quite logic. You can see here the effect of the, of the wall solution, the absorption of the wall solution. Here it was uh, interesting. Let's say it's in the little office, the cellular office, you can see that the amount of absorption when you go over 50, it doesn't uh, decrease that much the reverberation time into the little office. I'm gonna fast because I have some uh, clicking noise I heard in my, my head. You can see here the behavior of the two room, <coughs> the test room and the reference room. That are the, so this is, a, I did not forget this data. We had a connection problem between the Netherlands and France. But uh, anyway, we, we, we have further data. So no problem. We, if you have any questions, uh, I'm sure Pierre will be happy to, to share those data. He has been working for it with it. Um, yeah, I'm going go to go to the results. Uh, um, so we use a method to pair two days that has the same uh, thermal behavior. And then by knowing the temperature difference between the two rooms, and the difference between the, the two days, we can actually have an idea of the effect of 50% uh, coverage of the ceiling. Here's a better way to um, present the results without the ceilings into the test room and with the ceiling. So we had an increase of 0.3 degrees. If you go above 50% uh, coverage, you go up to 70, we had something close to one degree. We made the calculation, I mean, Pertz made the calculation on the minimum temperature, the average temperature, and the maximum temperature. So here you have an idea when you have with 50 and 70. So you are, when you have 50% um, uh, coverage, you are around 0.3. I think we mentioned that results uh, previously. So here are the, the conclusion of this research. Uh, I will not go through everything, uh, but uh, we know that from the measurements we have been performing that into the open space, yes, 50% coverage is good. We reduce the sound propagation, but as Andrew mentioned yesterday, the ISO standard is mentioning uh, an objective of seven, uh, seven decibel by doubling distance that you need to reach. We were under that result, so we would like to perform more measurements using screens because we believe that absorptive screen will help us to reduce some propagation. We were quite happy about the results because an increase of 0.3 with a 50% coverage, <coughs> it, it's, it's quite interesting. And um, I will tell you why. This was during the summer in 2012 we have been performing the measurements. This is extreme condition. This is the extreme weather. It's uh, maybe four, three weeks uh, a year. So we are talking about a solution that can improve people's life uh, every day, as mentioned Reiner, and will have an effect of 0.3 degrees that you cannot even feel few days a year. Thank you.